Fora TV. Idea Immersion. Visit us at www.fora.tv. When I checked my voicemail, Jesus left me a message. Hey Jason, it's Jesus. I'm ready to give you the exclusive as promised, he said. We literally just finished working on the details. Call me when you get this message. My body started to tremble like it did back in the days when I knew I was close to scoring drugs. It was the score that I got off on most. I took out a fresh notebook from my knapsack, flipped it open, and wrote exclusive from Jesus on the first page. I underlined those words a few times. Then I picked up the phone and called him. Jesus Aradano, got your message, bro. Break it down for me. Okay, you ready? Yep. In February of 1999, a market participant alerted the PX's market monitoring committee to some strange activity that took place regarding one of the transmission lines. We've determined that an out-of-state seller violated the rules for trading electricity by submitting a bid into the market for 2,900 watts, 2,900 megawatts to be carried on a transmission line that has a rated capacity of 15 megawatts. Jesus, I have no fucking idea what you're talking about. <laughs> I said, somewhat frustrated by all the technical details. Can you explain this in English? Basically what it comes down to is this company tried to fit an elephant through a keyhole. They were manipulating the market so they can make more money. What company was this? Enron. That was the first time I ever heard of Enron. I soon discovered that Enron was the Studio 54 of corporate America, the epitome of megacorp decadence. I heard rumors of strippers roaming the hall and all-night parties at hotels and bars. Enron was all about excess. It was more, 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 now, now, now. Naturally, I was intrigued by those stories of gluttony. Although socially I remained a liberal, working at Dow Jones quickly transformed me into a pro-business, free-market conservative. I thought of Enron and the people who worked there as celebrities. I wasn't convinced that the information I was getting from Jesus would make a good story. It seemed too technical. And I didn't really understand what Enron had done wrong and what impact the company's actions had on the financial community. Deliberately congesting the transmission line could have caused power prices to go up and it could also cause a blackout, Jesus explained to me, because we can't send power from point A to point B. You see, Enron owns the rights to that transmission line, so we sort of rent it from them to send power back and forth. And if there's traffic on the line, we have to pay Enron a lot of money to clear the traffic to keep the power flowing. Ultimately, that money is charged back to the utility, and the utility bills the consumer. What it comes down to is Enron looked for a way to make money. They purposely tried to clog the transmission line, knowing that we'd have to pay them to free up the line so we could keep the power flowing and avoid blackouts. It's a clear case of manipulating the system for financial gain. My head started to hurt. I couldn't comprehend the meaning of all this. I planned on asking Mark Olden to translate what Jesus said to me after I got off the phone. So what are you guys going to do about this manipulation, or whatever you call it? I asked Jesus. Well, first of all, you need to understand that this is the first case of manipulation we found since California officially deregulated in 1998, Jesus said. We're taking action against Enron's, Enron because we want to send a message out to the other, other energy companies that trade power. Just because our market is young and imperfect doesn't mean you can get away with this type of behavior. OK, what action? Enron is going to pay a $25,000 fine to settle this, Jesus said, and promise that they won't do it again. I'll fax you a copy of the settlement. Cool. Uh, I'm going to also call Enron for a comment. Can you call me back and let me know what they said? Yeah, no problem. When I told Mark the nature of my story, he freaked. Holy shit, he said, flailing his arms. That's a major story. It is? Shit, yeah, you don't understand. Enron's been pushing for deregulation because they say it will lower prices. And then they're fucking California in the ass when no one's looking and trying to jack up prices. Okay. Jason, you just got the story of the year. I did? Dude, your story is going to prove that the market can be fucked with. No one has been able to do that. Believe me, a lot of people have tried. Everyone in the country is watching to see how deregulation works in California before they start to deregulate. California is fucked. They should have designed a better market. They left too many regulations in place. It's really not competitive at all. Fuck, I had no idea. 
Mark hooked me up with the name and telephone number for Enron's spokesman, Mark Palmer. I called Palmer at his office in Houston and introduced myself. Hi, Mark, I said in a high-pitched voice that usually came up when I had to tell someone that I was going to write a negative story about them. My name is Jason Leopold. I'm the new bureau chief for Dow Jones Newswires in Los Angeles, but I'm actually calling you from New Jersey. <laughs> well, welcome aboard, Jason, Mark said. What can I do for you? Well, I hate to do this, I said, trying to insinuate I cared about him in Enron so he would feel relaxed and be forthcoming with me. I know we just met, but this story just fell into my lap, so I have no choice. Sure, Mark said. I understand. Well, I just got off the phone with the CalPX, and they said Enron paid a $25,000 fine for breaking some rule that has to do with electricity trading and clogging the transmission line. Can I get a comment from you about that? That's bullshit, Mark shouted into the phone. I can't believe the PX is making a federal case about this. We paid the 25 grand to cover the PX's cost for investigating this. Enron did not admit any guilt. Okay, I understand, I said. Is what you just told me for the record? Yeah, you can quote me on that. Well, what's the deal, Mark? Sounds like there's something going on with Enron and the PX. The PX is singling out Enron because we compete with them. Enron also has a trading platform. It's called Enron Online, and we want people to use that when they're trading instead of the PX. What about the claims that you guys clogged the transmission line? Jason, I can tell you that there were 1,400 separate, separate instances of that in the past year, and the PX is only penalizing Enron. That's why I said they're singling us out. Look, this market is crying out for more power, and we're doing everything we can to deliver it. We're not manipulating. Mark Olden helped me translate the technical parts of my notes, and I wrote up the story. I didn't bother to call Jesus back because I wanted to get the story out on the wire and be done with it. it. It didn't feel like I got the juicy story I was hoping for. On May 3rd, 2000, the headline, California finds Enron violated power transmission rules, ran across the Dow Jones news wires. My 615-word story said Enron manipulated the market and purposefully tried to clog the Silver, the Silver Peak transmission line, which runs from California's Central Valley to San Diego in order to boost wholesale electricity prices and Enron's bottom line. I didn't know it then, but it would take nearly two years to the day my story on Enron was first published before it made any kind of an impact. This would be the story that federal energy regulators and investigators, congressmen and senators, would point to after Enron's bankruptcy to prove that the company devises, devised a scheme to rip off California. Turns out that I wrote the first story ever published documenting one of Enron's scams and the first story ever published that contained proof that California's electricity market was being manipulated.